One of the great things about the Nintendo Switch or the Switch OLED is the fact that you can enjoy console quality games on the go or in your home. One of the bad things about the Switch or the Switch OLED are these guys here, the Switch Joy-Cons. To me, this is one of the reasons why I don't like playing in handheld mode. I think the analog sticks are too small, the buttons are too small, and overall, I don't like the fact that in handheld mode, whether it's the original Switch, my Switch OLED, or my Super Mario Switch OLED, it always feels like there's a little bit of flex in these in the rails. And that is where one of my favorite accessory manufacturers has a new item designed to kind of address that. This is the Clutch Wireless Game Deck from KMD. And you may not be very familiar with them. They're very similar to what you would find from like a Retrobit. Uh, it's actually the same parent company, but this is their more budget-friendly line that's on, uh, that they offer on here. Now, one of the cool things about this is unlike other Joy-Con replacements, it's one solid unit, so you don't have you know, the two separate left and right Joy-Cons. It's available in two different colors, the purple as you see here, there's also available in a white, and as you can see on the right-hand side, the right-hand control stick looks like a GameCube's. So we're gonna take this out of the box, we're gonna check it out, we're gonna see how it plays both on an original Switch and a Switch OLED, and just see overall, is it worth it? So here we have the clutch from KMD on the bench, and a couple of interesting things here. First of all, this 15 hours of gameplay, it has a built-in battery to it, which is great. A couple other neat features that we have on the bottom here too. We've got dual vibration, motion sensing, so it'll work with the, uh, the gyroscope controls, turbo functionality, storage for four cartridges, and USB to USB-C cable looks to be included on here too. And nothing really on the top or bottom. On this side, it's showing you the same sort of things with 15 hours of gameplay, dual vibration, motion sensing, turbo function, four cart storage, and USB to USB-C on the back. When you have to grab your switch and take it on the go, you want to get the most out of your time. You don't want to struggle with your grip with the Clutch Wireless Game Deck coming to save the day. Simply dock your switch console into the Clutch Wireless Game Dock and it will connect wirelessly with the benefit of a comfortable grip, solid D-pad, and turbo functionality. You'll get up to 15 hours enough to keep you engaged throughout your time away from your dock. On the side here, connect wirelessly to your console, which means technically if you wanted to, you could use this as a pro controller in and of itself. Up to 15 hours of gameplay via a 1000 milliamp lithium ion battery, adjustable dual vibration motion sensing controls, two additional back buttons allow for mapped controls, uh, turbo uh, functionality for rapid fire, and includes a USB to C split cable for simultaneous charging. So you can charge this and your switch at the same time. Uh, and here you can see too, it does have that additional cartridge storage, uh, securely locks the console into place, macro button and uh, auto loop, and then full and comfortable grip. So let's go ahead and open this guy up. All right, so there's just a piece of tape here keeping this side on, which we've cut through with our handy dandy. <laughs> we, we used a thumbtack, because I don't know where my Zacto knife is right now. Tom, did you steal it again? Tom from Do You Nerd. All right, so. There's everything out. You have your USB to dual USB-C cables, which is nice. A set of instructions. And then here is the clutch itself. I like that. First of all, I just love the color. The color is great. Um, definitely reminds me of a GameCube, which I think they're going for with that C-Stick. That feels good. Buds feel great. Now, one thing it didn't indicate on the box anywhere and looking at the price, I don't believe these are Hall Effect sensors. But again, you're looking at a pretty inexpensive price. Now, interesting to note here is the fact that on a lot of these grips, there's a male USB connector right here that plugs into the switch. This doesn't have that. So again, this is a wireless controller. It's kind of unique. Um, there is no, or there aren't any rails or anything in there to take up for the space difference between the Switch and the Switch OLED, which is interesting. Uh, taking a look, oh, I like that. That's just very simple how you can go ahead and store your Switch cartridges in there. And then I wonder if that has to be how it locks into place. So depending on where you have the lock set here, determine Switch, Switch Lite. Okay. And then you do have an SR, SL button, a button here looks like for the backlighting. 
uh, menu button and then your MRML for programmability. Those feel good. Analog sticks feel good. You've got a home button here, turbo. What's nice too is there's only one turbo. I've seen in the past too where like there's a turbo for this side and a turbo for that side. This one turbo is for both of them. So let's so take a real quick look just through the manual. So go ahead to install it. All that you do is you remove the Joy-Cons from the side of your system and then slide the system into place. Pretty simple and straightforward. Kind of what I would expect. Uh, disassembling, same thing. Just uh, unlock the locks, slide it out, and there you go. To pair it, now one of the things you want to make sure is that you have your system set up so that it can use pro style controllers. I'll have a video right up here that'll walk you through that if you run into any issues. So you want to use either your Joy Cons or Pro Controller to enter pairing mode, go into change grip order. And then what you do is you press and hold the home button for three seconds until the red light changes to blue and then release and hold uh, to wait for the clutch to connect. If you hold the home button down for too long, it'll cause it to shut down. So good to know that the home button, also power key. Uh, and then that is for pairing for the first time. Once paired, simply press the uh, home button to wake up the unit. Turbo functionality basically has a uh, manual turbo where you press and hold the T button and then the key that you want to use turbo with. And it'll start uh, rapid firing when you press the button down. Auto fire will be if you press and hold the T button again for that same button. Uh, press and hold the T button and then press the button that uh, had been set to auto turbo to disable turbo fire altogether. And then to remove turbo from all buttons, just hold the T button for five seconds and that will disable all turbo for you. There are three different levels of turbo. Slow, five inputs per second, medium, 12, and fast, 20. For vibration, there are three levels of vibration strength, off, weak, and strong. The clutch must be paired to the console to adjust the vibration. Press L, R, and Z, L, Z, R together, and it will vibrate once to indicate the settings has gone up. So off, weak, strong. So that's good to know. You can go ahead and program the back buttons. I'm not a fan of back buttons, so I'm not gonna spend any time going over that. Lighting effects. Tap the light button to cycle through the different light modes. Press light and T to restore the rainbow light mode. Press and hold light for five seconds. Turn off all light effects except for the indicators. Press the light button to enable the light effects. Again, uh, hold light and use the left stick up or down to adjust the brightness. And then there is what they're calling the key linker app, which will allow you to uh, dive into advanced settings such as button configuration, joystick controls, vibration calibration, and firmware updates. Um, there is a uh, indication here of where you can go ahead and download that app. Charging when fully connected, uh, or when connected signal light will flash slowly while charging. Once fully charged, the light will remain on. So I do happen to have my Mario Edition Switch OLED here. So we are gonna go ahead and get this guy configured. So we are going to pop off my Joy-Cons. Turn on the system here. And yes, I was playing Uno. I actually like Uno. Okay, slide the system in. And let's see here, locks are in place. It's got a good control to it. I mean, good balance overall, I, I like it. So let's go down here to controllers, change grip order, and one 1,000, two 1,000, three 1,000. There we go. And we are paired. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now is, I wanna just pop out the cartridge that I have in here. I have Mario Wonder in here, so we're gonna pop that guy out real quick on you. So, changing cartridges, not the easiest. I wish that there was a little bit more of a relief here. Uh, like if this were a couple millimeters lower, that would definitely make this more user friendly. So be careful when you're removing games out of here, I guess. So main thing I wanna just see goes in, is it spring loaded or not? So these are not spring loaded, it is just a pressure fit. 
just so you know. You know what, we're gonna go ahead, I'm gonna set this off to the side. Let's play some games and just see how the control sticks and everything are. So let's dive into some Super Mario Wonder just to kind of see how things are. I'm able to do wall kicks without a problem, but can I get up? There we go. Now this is actually my first time on this level, so... I do love the floating cap trick. Hey now, hey, rude. I don't know that I love the, um, the change to the sound effect on the fire flower. Oh cool, that's what I was hoping you could do and that was... Come on you. I was hoping that you could melt the ice blocks with fire flower and thankfully you can. So for a standard action platformer here, no complaints. I think we've played enough Mario Wonder for the time being, although I'm gonna go ahead and finish grabbing that other little... Oh, damn! That's what I needed to do. Okay, we're gonna go home. And one of the games I always test is Street Fighter II Turbo, so we're gonna dive into that. And while Street Fighter is loading, we're just gonna kinda take you through all the different colors that we have here. And it has that breathing mode too. Oh, that's kind of neat. It's like Simon. Now the reason why I test Street Fighter is because it's a great test of lag, latency, delay. Also, it really pushes the analog stick and the D-pad. Um, whoa, Fei Long, I can't remember the last time I fought him. Okay, so, so far so go. Oh, Fei Long threw me. Got him there. Awesome. Got him there. So that overall worked very well. Um, we are going to try the D-pad now. Now, just for me personally, where my hands lay, I prefer the positioning of the analog stick, but I know there are some people that you've got to play via the D-pad on a fighting game. You know, both are excellent. Uh, and for not being a hall sensor on the analog stick, um, this is playing quite nicely. Got him. Um, no complaints there whatsoever. Go back to the home button. Let's try Donut Dodo. I've been playing a ton of this lately. Absolutely love this game. Very addictive, very frustrating too. If you love single screen games like Popeye or or Donkey Kong or things like that from back in the 80s, you will like this. Very much inspired by Burger Time. Yeah, this feels great. Oh no! Ah, I got smushed there, that was my own stupid fault. Yeah, I can't complain about the play control. The uh, the problem is just that damn dodo so many times gets me. All right, overall that one's good. Now, one game I traditionally also check with something that's got the turbo mode has been uh, Star Fox or Star Fox 64. We will dive into Star Fox 64. I always forget which is the bomb. There we go. So we're going to do Turbo A, Turbo A. Now it is automatically firing, which is a great thing. Oh, got him, yes. Um, that auto fire is fantastic. Now, on Star Fox 64, one of the things you do lose is the charge shot. But, I mean, this is really, really good. Wow, I am playing terribly here. Man, 
Oh, I thought... Hang on here. Oof, got me. A lot of that was me just screwing around with the controller. Overall, works well though. Yes, you should be thankful, you jerk face. All right, so that overall, pretty, pretty good. Initial feelings on this, like I am, I'm very happy with this performance. Um, with what it is delivering for the price that we paid and everything. Definitely very happy with it. We're going to switch up one last game. We're going to play something on the NES. So let's try some punch out. And granted, Glass Joe is not the hardest competitor out there, but I mean, we can also just see lag, latency, delay, how it feels. So overall, what do I think of this? Um, pretty comfortable. It, you know, I'm generally not a fan of anything that makes the switch wider, but this is not obnoxiously so. But it is still wider. I will tell you that much. Um, feels very responsive and it has to because of the fact that it's using Bluetooth to go ahead and connect to the system. Speaking of which, let's go ahead. I'm going to just pause for a second. I want to do this. I'm going to unlock. Check this out. Oh, hang on. So the system is slid out now. It is disconnected. You can see clearly the system is disconnected. I can still use this as a standard controller. That's pretty stinking cool. There we go. I tried to hit the select button to get him to do the super earlier. It's the plus button, you dummy. Um, overall, really, really happy. And for the money, like, if you are considering the Hori split pad, this blows the split pad out of the water, in my opinion. So what do I think of the Clutch Wireless Game Deck from KMD for the Nintendo Switch? Well, first and foremost, I do want to show you, here is my Mario Switch OLED. Here is my original Nintendo Switch, the non-OLED model. It does fit in here without any problem, and it does not go anywhere now to get it to pair to this since i had it paired to that one i did press the reset button for about five seconds went in all through the same exact sort of pairing mode that you saw me do originally with that as we are now uh, going to sleep since it's been there for a few minutes um still not my preferred gameplay style for the Switch. Like for me personally, my favorite way to play the Switch in handheld mode is still the fixture gaming S1 and S2. That also is a lot more expensive of a total investment. You've got a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller, 60 to 80 bucks depending on which version you go with and everything. And then you've got the fixture gaming S1 or S2, 30 to $50. So you know, you're looking a lot more invested. This for the money is a great value that I think if you're just looking for a casual game grip, this is really good. The fact too that it does not take any uh, battery from your Switch is nice as well. Now, I wish there was a way it would reverse charge from the grip to the Switch. That is something I wish that I had. Does not support Amiibo as well, so that is something to be uh, aware of. Performance is surprisingly good for something this budget friendly. You saw as I was playing Street Fighter, all the moves pulled off, no issue whatsoever. The lighting effects, the rumble, just on and on and on, very, very good. You know, from a design standpoint, one thing that I would change is the height of this back part of the clutch in relation to the height of the switch. I wish it was two or three millimeters lower down. That way it would be easier to insert and remove cartridges around the cartridge door here. I don't know if the thought process was people just lose them. I don't know. Um, if you are a fan of the back button option out there, this does that for you. The rumble, very good. The um, overall fit, feel, finish for the money. Like this to me, if you are looking 
at a Hori split pad or a split pad mini, this blows it out of the water. Without a doubt, hands down, better value, better performance, more comfortable. Just if you're considering a split pad pro, go with this instead. I think you'll be much happier. In fact, I think you can probably get you know, this and a game for less than what the split pad pro costs. And you can use it wirelessly too. That's the other thing that's really cool. Now, I do want to thank KMD for sending us one of these to check out. They did not review this content before it goes live. These are all my own thoughts. Overall, like if you are a Game Grip fan, this is definitely something that you might want to check out. Now, if you want to check out some of the other videos that we've done on KMD products, I'll have that link for you right up there. Go ahead and check it out. They have so much cool stuff and it doesn't break the bank.